636-1067. Be right back. Love sports? Love culture? Well, I've got a brand new podcast called Take Line from Crooked Media, hosted by me, Jason Concepcion, and two-time WNBA champion Renee Montgomery. From the games to the players to the issues happening both on and off the court, we'll be tackling the important political and social issues happening in sports head on. New episodes drop every Tuesday, so follow and subscribe on Radio.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can tell when your car battery's dying. But with your water heater, you'll never know until it starts leaking. Before you buy another tank, consider a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to heat or leak. Lower energy bills and endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian strong warranty. If your water heater is over eight years old, it's time to check out Navian at tanklessmadesimple.com. Black Buck by Matteo Ascaripor. A crackling satirical debut about a young black man given his shot at stardom at a mysterious and wildly successful startup where nothing is as it seems. Mesmerizing, a high-wire act full of verve and dark comic energy, raves New York Times bestselling author Colson Whitehead. Available now in hardcover and audiobook wherever books and audiobooks are sold. Welcome back. Jucky's on 106.7 The Fan all year long. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary presented by PenFed Credit Union. Whether you're in uniform or not, you can apply today at PenFed.org. New podcasts come out every Thursday. Time now, though, for the Junkie Sports page. Jason's going to fill us in on the latest. Sports page brought to you by Impress Technology, an SBA certified hub zone solution provider and Dell federal partner. All right, let's start with the NCAA tournament. We are down to the uh, Elite Eight, which, of course, starts tonight. Uh, The schedule is a little weird this year because normally uh, the NCAA tournament would have the Sweet 16 starting on a Thursday, but they started on a Saturday, so you've got games tonight and tomorrow. The number one overall seed, Gonzaga, keeps advancing. They pummel Creighton 83-65. This game was close for about, I don't know, eight to ten minutes. And then Gonzaga just started to pull away. They're just too fast. They're just too good. Um, too many weapons. How many Every- pros on that Zags team? Suggs, for sure. Timmy? I, mean, I don't know. Kis- two or three? Kis- there's, no, there's Kispert. Four, four, possibly. In, uh, four, for sure. Joel I- Iola will be a late first-round pick. Ajaye, uh, you mean? Ajaye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You think he's a, he's a first round pick? He's at the bottom of the first round. Jay Ajayi oh. used to run uh, tote the rock for the Eagles. I remember. Yeah, back I, in the day. Timmy could be. I don't think Timmy's a first rounder. I mean, maybe no, a no, second. But he's rounder. a pro. Oh, you mean NBA player or just yeah. a pro? No, NBA player. Yeah, possibly. We'll see. Um, but definitely Suggs and Kispert. Um, we'll see about the other two. But they're just too good. They're just they got weapons everywhere. Everyone in their starting five. The kid, the kid who transferred from Florida, Nebhard, he's money. He killed them. Yeah, he killed Creighton. Seventeen, he was seven for nine from the floor. If they end up going undefeated, how do you stack them up with a team like Indiana? Indiana, I heard somebody make this point. Indiana, I think when they won the net, when they won the national championship, went undefeated, won thirty two games. And I believe Gonzaga, should they win it, will end up winning thirty two games. And the person was talking about Kentucky when they lost just one game. Mm-hmm. They won thirty nine before losing their fortieth game. I mean, I don't know how you stack them up. It's tough to st- stack up teams from from gem- generations that are you know separated by forty years. But I, ho- I hope that does not become like a morning debate, like a talking point. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I mean, who cares? <laughs> yeah, Indiana I mean, can have it. I'll be that we can be a, one of the greatest teams of all time. Drive's got I'll, the I mean, drive. Ha- drive has this chip on the shoulder yeah. because he knows that if they go undefeated. And win the national title, everyone's just going to say what uh, what a joke of a conference they play. Oh, okay. So, so Dra- Drab has this weird chip Gonzaga chip on on his shoulder about it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, it's just it's, Cause it's I, always the same conversation. So, so he's ready to be super he's, defensive. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no, he no, is. I'm not super defensive. I'll take a national championship. Sure. But I hope of course we, you will. I hope we play Michigan and beat them. And when I say we, I say that as a fan. <laughs> I hope we beat Michigan by 20, and then I hope we beat Baylor by 20. I, I got on Drab's nerves this morning because uh, the first thing I told him uh, was, how does it feel to have the greatest team in college basketball and no one cares? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my question, Drab. Theoretically, if Arizona State played Gonzaga in the national championship, who do you pull for? I haven't watched an ASU basketball game in 20 years. <laughs> I don't care about ASU It has basketball. to be ASU, though. No, he just so, said Gonzaga. No, since you went there, I, I mean, do, I, I do not care about. But ASU. if they were that good, I think you would change no. your tune. Fork up. You think you would be saying that? He no. would. <laughs> Lock, he would. He roots for half the college basketball teams on the planet. You think he wouldn't root for the team? You guys are going to where he went me. to the school. My parents are. We we grew up watching Gonzaga. My parents are season ticket holders. They care not at all about James Harden or Eddie House or any other <laughs> Lou Dort. <laughs> so is it just the basketball team? Because you got siced when Fitzpatrick mentioned that Jake Plummer was well, his all-time I'm favorite happy, player. I, I'm proud to be a Sun Devil. I just don't care about our Nubs basketball. Program. You don't care about the football team either. Uh, no, I do. Like he's a, he's a big ASU here. golf yeah, fan. <laughs> he loves Herm Edwards. Yeah. Like, well, like, here's the thing I about like, I like. I'm diehard about two teams: the Seahawks and Gonzaga basketball. Here's the thing about Gonzaga. <laughs> That's about it. If you're going to beat them this year, they've got to be like on their C minus game, and you've got to be on your A plus game. Pretty much, you got to. I mean, shoot the lights out. I think Baylor, Baylor's guards are really good. But I think Baylor's guards can match up against Gonzaga, but I don't think. But Baylor's just not big enough. I mean, they're active and they're athletic and they can hit the boards, but that that would be a fantastic game, I think. We still. Can I don't get, think Gonzaga would blow out Baylor. No, I, I doubt that. That's the game everyone wanted to see all year, all year yep, long. Yep, so, I want to see that. Yep. I mean, the Baylor could easily win that game. And then the way Michigan plays, I mean, they're just they're just so efficient. I, I think Gonzaga would beat them, but. Those would be really good matchups. Gonzaga, Michigan, and then Gonzaga, Baylor would be really good matchups. But their next matchup is USC. Gonzaga's USC. next is USC. Yes, uh, who beat Oregon last night? I didn't see any of this game. This was a late game. They pounded them to beat them by fourteen. The Mobley brothers apparently were really good in that game. Um, and then, of course, UCLA will play Michigan. Michigan advanced. They beat Florida State. Florida State couldn't hit a shot, especially in the first half. And uh, UCLA beats Bama by 10. And UCLA barely got into the tournament. They played in the first four. Yep. They were, they were in 11 seed. crazy. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Making an Elite Eight run. We could wacky. Hey, look, Mick Cronin went to the tournament pretty much every year when he was at Cincy. He's just, he can coach his kids up. He really can. We could see a USC UCLA Final Four. Bill Walton would be butt sized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'd be very happy. Be I, cool. I was listening to the coverage on 167 The Fan and Doug Gottlieb was commenting that UCLA would be even better that they lost two of their potential starters this year. I think one with injury and one oh, that went Smith, to the G yeah. League. Yeah, Chris Smith got hurt, and the other kid, uh, Nix, who was a he was like a five star recruit. He went to the G League. Yes, they would be even better. Correct. That's pretty sick. So you've got one, two, three, um, three teams from the Pac-12 in the Elite Eight. Think it, about that. Is anybody watching this tournament? And two of those are double-digit seats. Why did Valdez say nobody cares? Am I just in a bubble here that I care and that nobody else is watching because there's no Duke in Kentucky and Kansas? I think he's. I don't know. I think he's just trying. To, what have the ratings to, been like? He's trying to tweak you. Are the I'm ratings trying to, up I'm down? trying to tweak you. I don't know that the ratings have come in. I would think people are watching. The it. first round. The first opening round was down twelve percent. I know that. Okay, but the right, that's opening not horrible. round was not on a. T- like it's, it wasn't on a traditional Thursday. Like I think it was a little bit. It's a little bit weird where everybody's kind of used to taking a day off from work, and then the Thursday and Friday is like the opening round. It was different this year. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure that's a factor, but um, now that you're getting down to the Elite Eight and obviously the Final Four, I think more people will start watching. Especially I know, if but you the have Elite Eight. Especially if you have different. three one seeds in it. The Elite Eight's going to be different because it's Monday, Tuesday. Versus Saturday, Sunday. So it's going to be hard to compare ratings. Yes. 100%. Well, the tourney will be different next year because Valdez and I will not participate in Survivor Pools. <laughs> we need to stand united on this, Valdez. That's I right. will stand arm in arm with you. Bama was so bad in the first half yesterday. I mean, they couldn't hit a shot. They missed 14 free throws, too. This is a team that usually can shoot the ball well. 
from beyond the arc and from the line, and they just didn't show up in the first half. Down 11, and I know the game went to overtime, but I didn't even think UCLA was that good in the second half yesterday. I shouldn't care at all, but I've been rooting against Alabama basketball-wise because I just don't want them to have <laughs> success right. in both football You want to be silly in both, right? right. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's just it's too much. Them. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're out. And then um, Oregon State will play Houston. So you've got Baylor, Arkansas, Oregon State, Houston on that side of the bracket. Um, And Oregon State beat Loyola by seven. I know, Cakes, you were upset. Loyola couldn't hit a shot in the first half. I saw saw that they were down like six or seven in the first half. I said, well, I just picked the loser. That's just (laughs) typical. Um, So Oregon State, who was a 12 seed, are in. And obviously we mentioned UCLA. They're an 11 seed. They're in. So... It's all about Gonzaga and who can beat Gonzaga. Um, I don't know if anybody can. Hey, by the way, UCLA is the prime example of why, if you're Mark Turgeon, you don't say this team isn't a Final Four team and you talk about how Bama is the fifth number one seed. Hmm. They're the ex- that's the exact example of why you don't do that. Because anything can happen. Yes. It's the tournament. Anything can happen. Any team can, can beat any team in this field. Yeah, look, when he said that, I thought it was just frustration. He was just reacting. I understand he's frustrated, but yeah. you, you can't tell me that you, UCLA is a top eight team in the country. No, they're the, just on a run. Exactly. Yeah, you get hot. Oregon State's hot. UCLA's hot. USC's hot. So, yeah, you're, I, I totally agree with you. Speaking of uh, Turgeon, you know, there's a lot of rumors over the weekend since uh, Shaka Smart left Texas to go to Marquette. There was some uh, some rumors out there that Turgeon would be interested in the Texas job. Who knows? We have no idea. Texas is talking to Royal Ivy, who played at Texas. He was on their Final Four team back in the early 2000s, and now he's an assistant in the NBA. Yeah, I saw Kevin Durant hyping him up. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see about that. Indiana hired Mike Woodson, who played for Bobby Knight. Um Long-time and NBA coach, including he, the Knicks. Yeah, he I was saw a lot Knicks. of people just killing that hire, to say it's the worst hire on the planet. Was he on that 76 team that went undefeated? I don't think he I don't, was. I don't know. Uh, but I, they hired him for six years, so they got their guy. Um, yeah, so we'll see, people see what happens. The, didn't people kill the Juwan Howard hiring? Seems to have worked out for Michigan. 100%. I think it's ageism. That could be part of it. First of all, Mike Woodson, we're rooting for him. He was a guest on the show, and he was awesome like mm-hmm. a year ago. And he's had a long NBA career of coaching. He always bounces back. What's not to like about the guy? He's, he, I think it's, everything I've ever heard is he's an awesome hey, coach. You're, you're, the one, you're the one voice that's, uh, that's hyping up the Woodson well, hire in Indiana. Because Indiana fans are delusional. Maybe they, got maybe that they are. Saying, I keep hearing, and, and the other 49 states is just basketball. <laughs> well, you know what, Indiana – you haven't been relevant since Bobby Knight had gr- brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good thing. We'll see if it works out. I mean, they, I mean, should be, uh, they should be lucky Mike Wood- Woodson takes the job. They're okay with Tom Crean. Well, they oh, ran him out they of were town. O- they were okay. <laughs> You don't want, You can't be just okay if you're an Indiana basketball team. You got to be better than just okay. Are they still wearing the stripes? Who would know? When was the last time they, they were on still, TV? Yes, they still wear the striped <laughs> pants, Ricky. They still do that bit. Um, all right, so in- pumping his Zags chest. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm on a, a roll. <laughs> Turn off my mic. I'm actually rooting for. I'm actually rooting for Gonzaga pretty hard. Because I, well, I want to see Gonzaga play Baylor, but Mark Few just seems like a good dude. I mean, he's had great teams obviously since he's been there. The Traps you know, winning four, you over. Right? Is it just one Final Four for the Zags? One Final Four. One they final got four. screwed in the championship. Was game. that in the Adam Morrison era? No, no, it was like four no. years ago. No. Ah. Adam Morrison, we lost to UCLA. He was crying on the court. Remember, everyone? <laughs> no, I don't remember. It's a famous. It's a famous picture. Who was the star on the 2017 team? Um, William Goss was. They had Zach. Zach Collins. They had uh, Sabonis. Oh yeah, they had Zach. You're right, Zach. No, Collins. Sabonis was gone by then. Um, no, I remember Zach Collins. Yeah. Since 2015, <laughs> they've been Elite Eight, Sweet 16, lost in the national championship game, Sweet 16 again, Elite Eight. Uh, obviously, last year nothing, and then this year, who knows? It, you know, probably national championship. I mean, they just had an unbelievable run. 
<laughs> Fuse, Fuse putting together some great seasons. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, the NFL is set to announce that they are expanding to 17 regular season games. And I know some players are not happy about it. Um, they're probably going to. 